Hi guys and girls, I'm Obsidian Ant and welcome to Elite Dangerous in VR. This is where I take a look at the game through the Oculus Rift and today I'm taking a look at the new Imperial Eagle. So here I am in a resource extraction site. I did try out one of the new hazardous extraction sites in the Eagle here but I found it a little bit too hard so I moved right the way down to a low intensity extraction site and this way I should be able to get some decent footage for the game. So as I did with the Federal gunship, I'm now essentially given a full tour of the ships in VR. Meaning I'll start with a bit of combat, I'll move on to some flight manoeuvres, then have a look around the cockpit and the bridge, and then we'll have a look at the external views of the Imperial Eagle. Both of the Eagles are very manoeuvrable, they're both impressive flights when in VR. It's helped a lot by the size of the canopy here, but for now I'm looking for a target. Now, these guys are in a wing of three, there's no way I'm going to be able to take them three on, so I need to find another target. Now, you can take on fairly tough targets, there's a python here, so I'll have a look to see if that's wanted. A python on my own might be a little bit difficult, but there is some police forces around here, that will probably help a bit. But certainly I won't be able to take on a wing of three. Now, I'm going to try and manoeuvre past the, there we go. Now, are those pythons fighting each other there? It did look like it, didn't it? He's coming back round. So it's manoeuvres like that where VR really does shine when ships pass right over the top of your head and you can track them all the way back. That is just an amazing sensation and you do feel the closeness of the ships to you. As you can see, I've got a beam laser fitted to the top hard point there and it is actually very close to my head. It feels that if I stretch my hand all the way up, I'd probably be shooting right through it. The addition of a medium hard point rather than a small hard point on the top of the ship does also make quite a difference. And as you can see, the beam laser is burning the Python's shield away quite fast. Now, he is only a competent ranking. I suspect that if I was shooting an elite or a deadly, I wouldn't get the shield down at all. So the cockpit of this particular ship is much smaller than most of the others. It feels a lot more tighter even than the Sidewinder which has, seems to have a little bit more width to it. This is much more like being in a fighter and then if any of you have watched the new Battlestar Galactica series where the pilots are sitting in the Vipers, Starbuck flying along there and she fires out the machine guns like I'm doing here. This very much has that sensation especially when you do the boosters and you, you fire off your kinetic weapons here. It's the closest ship we've currently got in the game that allows us to recreate those sort of scenes although the Condor in the CQC does come fairly close but in general both the Eagle and the Viper are the best matches for the Vipers out of Battlestar Galactica especially if as I say you fit some multi cannons. Now the Python here is starting to go down let's get in front of him before I start targeting there, there we go now the other thing that's really nice in VR is when you see all the other ships flying around you, it gives you... I was about to say VR gives you a much better situational awareness but I made a bit of a fool of herself there. Anyway, yeah in general it does give you a much better situational awareness. I can see the other ships here in my peripheral vision. On the video you can't quite see the full field of view I actually have in the rift. I can actually see about half as much again to the top and to the bottom and probably equivalent to the left and the right. Anyway, that's the python down and let's look for another target. So I'll cut straight to the next target here. I had been fighting the dropship for a little while, again helped out by the local security forces. So there's a couple of things that aren't immediately apparent when looking at these videos. And one is the nature of the head tracking here. It does look a little bit similar to track IR perhaps when you're watching the videos themselves but it does have a greater range of movement here. I can look right the way back if I want to and of course I don't need to keep my eyes facing the monitor in front of me because I'm looking around the environment rather than using my head as a control input. And there is one of those fantastic moments. So I think I'm gonna follow that anaconda for a moment and do a few close passes of it and then we'll move on and have a little bit of a tour around the cockpit of this ship. Let's see how close I can get there. When you get up close like that, you can truly appreciate just how large the anaconda actually is. And when you see how it turns in space like that, you appreciate that it is quite manoeuvrable considering its size, even though when you're flying one, it does turn pretty slow. 
So here's something else I really do like doing in VR and that's flying around the asteroid belts here getting as close to the rocks as I actually can. These rocks are absolutely huge in size and when you get close to them like that you could almost feel as though you just reach your arm out and brush them as you fly by. Now I haven't done this for a very long time because the asteroid belts haven't been all that good for a long time and with patch 1.4 Frontier have actually fixed them so they actually look brilliant back in VR again. When I'm flying around like this I like to switch flight assist off quite a bit which allows me to do some really tight manoeuvres around the asteroids. And this really does show off the manoeuvrability of the Eagle. It's something you can't do in any other ship except maybe the Viper. If you've got some really good combat pilot skills, you could probably outmatch even the larger ships simply by keeping out of their line of fire with this ship. Right then, I'm going to park up here and let's have a bit of a look around the cockpit. I'm going to zero the throttle here. Give me a moment. There we go. I don't want to be flying off as I step away from the controls. So, this time I'm going to do something that looks a little bit strange probably compared to normal rather than standing up because the cockpit here is actually quite low I don't want to end up poking my head through the roof I'm just going to roll back in my in-game seat and I'll clip through the pilot chair there I'll get back a little bit further I think Lucky my in-game seat's got wheels on it I guess Right, that asteroid looks like it's getting a bit close doesn't it? Now the canopy back here is quite a bit higher which means I should be able to stand up now. Just if I stand up right up in the pilot seat you can almost poke your head through the canopy. So what have we got here? Now it's often a surprise to see just how large the eagles actually are. When you're actually in the seat it feels like quite a snug and very tight area but when you get back here and you have a look around you really do get to appreciate how large this area actually is. Not just the bridge area, the cockpit, but also the ship itself. Looking over at the wings there, well, I'd say it feels like the size of a Learjet at least. These are quite big ships. And the sensation here is very much like when you're sitting in a passenger seat on a plane and looking out the window over the plane's wing. It's more difficult to use words to convey the sense of distance between the ship and the asteroid there. It probably looks quite flat on the video I'd imagine. But it's like having parked your car right butt up against a wall or something like that. So it's very close. So let's have a look at the back of the cockpit or bridge area itself. And you can see you've got a walkway down here. That's probably 10 to 12 foot long. So quite away with a bunch of steps there and a nice canopy going all the way back giving us an exceptional view of the outside area. As I've said before there's such a temptation to want to go and have a look through that door and see what's there even though I know in the game there's nothing actually modelled there but it's going to be wonderful when we can actually get out and have a look. I'm trying to lean over the edge here and see how much of the side of the ship we can actually see but that's about as far as I can actually lean without going out of the field of view of the tracking camera. So let's move on and take a look at the external views of the ship. The camera control is a little bit more difficult with the Oculus Rift so you'll see me jumping around and judging around a bit more than what you're perhaps used to in my other videos. So first up we'll take a pass underneath the ship there and you can see the relative size there to this ship with the cargo hatch there. From this distance it looks like that cargo hatch would take an average sized car or maybe something a little bit larger and we can certainly see that that's where the SRV is going to fit when planetary landing comes out. Let's move toward the back of the ship. And there's the entrance way to the ship. You can see that is clearly the height of a person or a little bit higher perhaps which gives you a, a good idea of just how wide this ship actually is across. It's very easy to mistake the Eagle for being about the size of a normal fighter jet but it is actually much larger than that. And as I come up the top here we get a nice overview of the ship itself. All in all the Imperial Eagle is an absolutely lovely ship and it really is a pleasure to fly in VR. I think that just about covers everything. As always, thanks for watching.
and I'll catch you guys and girls next time.